Yep, there we go. I don't even know how this thing. Hopefully y'all can see the title, but uh this is uh damn the phone charger. It's another lesson, man, another another installment of Word of Wisdom Wednesday. And now uh, we're gonna deal with a uh I mean, I guess it's controversial, but we're gonna deal with putting away a divorce. Um, you know, because it's been commonly taught that putting the putting away a divorce is the same thing. And if you get if you get a divorce or if you are if somebody divorce you and then you marry again, you commit an adultery and you adulterous forever type stuff. And we're gonna see if that's what the the, the Messiah was talking about. We're gonna see. Um you know, it's been a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of talking, um, but we're gonna let the Lord decide. You know, so um, very very important. It's a very important lesson. Uh, very important topic. You know, because it's causing people to uh, it's causing people a lot of stress, and it ain't even based off book. It's it's more traditional or or some personal uh, stuff folks dealing with so they got it got to say what whatever they saying it is and some people work that way but some people are uh using the scriptures as intended um in its purity um so nobody uh you know nobody up to no you know tricks or nothing nobody trying to deceive you or trick you or have you spent up around here nobody trying to see nobody as usual, on Word of Wisdom Wednesday, and as I've taught in other lessons, we're going to deal with the Bible, period. And that ain't with a T, period. We're going to deal with the book and see what it say. So, where should we start? I guess it would be best if we just start in the law, right? Because whenever you don't understand something in the new, where should you go back to? It's foundation. The law. Okay, so let's do it. Let's go right to the to the law. Let's go to Leviticus, 21st chapter. And really, uh, this is it's really dealing with, you know, where all this, this teaching is coming from. It ain't coming from a righteous place. When you say it's all, you know, you can't divorce, it's all, you sin and you're an adulterer because if you marry a woman who was once married before and you marry her, and she divorced. She ain't got no husband. She divorced. But you say you can't marry her. But a sister that slept with 20 people, no problem. You can marry her because she ain't been married before. That's not righteous. That's unrighteousness. That's being partial in the law, which the Lord spoke against. That don't make no sense. And I know the Messiah was not saying what other people saying. And it could be a misconception, a misunderstanding. Let that be the case. But it don't seem like it. Because all the fallout that's happened this, month, this past month, it don't sound like it. But we're going to clear it up. Leviticus 21. Leviticus, the 21st chapter. What up, Uriah? I'll see you in a second. You know, we celebrating the new moon. We lit at sundown. All right, Leviticus 21. This in the law, right? Deuteronomy, it means to repeat what? Repeat or rehearse what? The law. So we're going to read about putting away and divorce. We're going to see if it's the same thing. And if not, then we need to go with that understanding. Okay? Now we're going to read in the New Testament. We're going to make it to the New Testament where the Lord said, Moses suffered it to be so. Moses didn't come up with this on his own. Moses was in the mountain of God for 40 days and 40 nights, two times. And, you, and so he discusses with the Lord. So he's like, man, these, these brothers is hard hearted, boy. They, they, the way they treat their women, boy, uh, we're going to have to figure out what's going on. Because they already knew when you come together, you're supposed to stay, stay together forever. That ain't even the question. We know that. Everybody in the Bible knows that when you marry somebody, that's it. You stay with them forever. That's what we promote. That's what we preach. But we also preach the truth because somebody will mishandle that and have somebody enslaved or in bondage for the rest of their life, being mistreated and all that, downtrodden, all of that. But the Lord said he came to uh, relieve the oppressed. He came to let the captor go free. And you can even be a captain in your own relationship. Let's not be over-righteous and say, that's not like, that's not act like everything, everybody doing everything right. But let's go to Leviticus 21st chapter. And let's read this. Now he's talking to the priest, right? 
But we're going to deal with it. Let's see what it's saying here. Leviticus, the 21st chapter and verse 6. This is the priest, right? Check this out. They shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of the God, they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. So in being holy, they need to take a certain type of woman. Let's see. Verse 7. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. A Levite cannot marry a woman who was sleeping around before. But as a common person, you could. What do, what do married people do? What is the intention for marriage? To raise kids. What do you have to do to, for, for a woman to have a baby? You have to sleep together. If, you're not, if a woman that is a whore is doing the same thing married people do, and you saying, oh, well, if a sister got divorced, then she can't remarry. But you can marry a sister who slept with 18 men first and marry her. That's unrighteous. We're not dealing with that. That is partial. That don't make no sense. Sister can have 10 baby daddies, 10 kids. You can marry her because she ain't been married before. But the sister that had a husband, one husband for 10 years, he divorced her. Oh, you can't marry her. That's adultery. Do that make sense? None at all. So let's read it, though. Let's read. If putting away and divorce is the same thing, and if you in adultery forever, people scared to come to class because they married to somebody who was married before. Ain't that something? But, but, but folks sleeping around left and right. <laughs> but let's deal with the book, though. Verse 7 again. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. But you could. A common man, you could take, you could marry a woman who's been slept with before. You, got, you could do that. We wouldn't, we, can't, we wouldn't be able to read Deuteronomy 24 for a woman who's divorced to be married to somebody else if it was like nobody, she done forever. We wouldn't be able to see that in the law. Because our foundation is the law then what comes after that? The testimony, right? See, it's going to be real simple when nobody's trying to lie to you, right? So verse 7, they shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane. So promiscuous, all that, they couldn't take none of them. But who could? A common person. What else? Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband. What? Why does it say the woman that put away that is put away has a, have a husband? Why does it say that? Why do it say the woman that is put away from who? Her who? Her husband. You know what that sound like? That sound like this. Let's go to the New Testament. I'm sorry, I didn't think we were gonna get to that quick. Go to 1 Corinthians the seventh chapter. 1 Corinthians the seventh chapter. 1 Corinthians the seventh chapter. Yeah, Bible real easy when nobody lying. Because folks say, oh yeah, man, somebody lying. Yeah, we're going to find out. 1 Corinthians 7. Mm, mm, mm. 1 Corinthians 7 and 9. Man, I did a lesson in D.C., in Washington, D.C. Israel Church of Jesus, Washington, D.C. Go find it. It's called Righteous Judgment. And many people were, were warned before this. And they didn't listen. So now you're spreading rumors and lies on something you have no business talking about. You don't even know what you're talking about. But let's read this. 1 Corinthians 7 and 9. He said, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. That's a fact. Because you could be fornicating all around and not get married. And unto the married. So now we're on the married now, right? And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart. From her husband. Mm, let not the woman leave the husband. Do it say she got divorced? Let's see. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Oh, brother, see, you say she ain't married. That means when she left, she broke the covenant. No, sir. He said, but if she depart, let her remain unmarried. That means don't mess with nobody else. Why? Let's see. And, and uh, it said, or be reconciled to who? Her husband. If they not married, why is he still calling her her husband? Because they was just they was still married. She just left the house. You just left the house. Just like if a brother put his wife out the house and don't give her no record or no, no proof that she is divorced, 
Nobody can touch her. And if you do, that's, that's called adultery. No, no form of proof that you've been divorced. No record, no recorder, no nothing. That's what the Lord hate. Brothers would just send throwing them out. I'm done with you. And if, if you ain't going to be with me, you ain't going to be with nobody else. That's wicked. But he say, uh, where we at? Verse uh, 10? No, verse 11. It said, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or, re or be reconciled to her who? Her husband. Because they are not divorced. He just, she just left. That's what it says. It says he departed. It didn't say he put her away or none of that or he divorced her or none of that. And what did it say in the following, in the last part? It said, let not the husband put away his wife. So don't even send her out. Don't do that either. Because the Lord intended for man and woman to be together forever. That is not under dispute. But we're going to find out that things happen, huh? And there are laws in place for things that happen. Let's find one. Go to Exodus 22. Because we'll use this one. We'll wear this one out. Let's go to Exodus, the 22nd chapter. Exodus 22. It's all about being righteous, man. You know, it's all about being righteous. Folks coming up with stuff they don't even do. And they want you to do it. But to tell you behind the scenes, oh, man, I wouldn't do it. Come on, man. Cut it out. Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. I don't hear nobody complaining about this scripture. You're not even dealing with the brothers that's doing it. You're, saying, you're not even saying, maybe you should stop sleeping with these women before making a commitment. Maybe you should stop that. No, nah, brother, if, you're not, if you sleep with her, you're supposed to endow her to be your wife. And if she say no, or if her father say no, whatever, just keep on moving. Do it again and again and again. That's wicked. Why don't you tell them to stop fornicating? Oh, see, brother, you tell people they can divorce and everybody's going to be getting divorced left and right. That ain't got nothing to do with you. And let's read this in Titus. Come on, man. Let's read the whole Bible. No, 1 Timothy. Let's read the whole book. 1 Timothy. I didn't plan on jumping back and forth, but it's okay. I let the Spirit lead. 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Wow, you can use a law unlawfully. Just like that script. Oh, if you sleep with a woman, you shall surely endow her to be your wife. Oh, that didn't work out. Do you bang, her, bang another one? Oh, that didn't work out. Do you bang her another one? Oh, you, you're not using the law lawfully. Oh, divorce. I can divorce? Oh, get with a woman, divorce her. Oh, get with another woman, divorce her. Oh, get with, you're not using it lawfully. Do that make the law sin? Is that my problem if you do that? It's not mine. Let's make sure. Let's go into Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. That's why I tell people the truth and let them make the decision because they're going to do it. They're going to do it regardless. But we got to be shepherds. We got to protect the flock, man. I'm not going to be your Lord, though. He say, be a shepherd, not as lords ruling over the people. We don't do that. I give you the Bible. You make a decision. Now, if you want to talk about me for that, who got to pay for that? You got to pay for that. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's how you can use the law unlawfully because the Bible is going to expose what you want. Oh, I can do this? Oh, what did Paul say? All things are lawful, but it ain't expedient for me to do. Like you, you run around here and say you get more than one wife. Now, now brothers talking about you can't cheat on your wife. They say, oh, man, you can't cheat on your wife. It's just fornication. Like, it ain't no such thing as cause and effect. Like, she's not affected by that. Like, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when y'all made vows, you wouldn't mention more than one wife, was it? Well, you got into the truth. Oh, man, I can have more than one. Now you caused now you call her to, to suffer. You thought that was lawful? That's deceit. Let's see if something about making vows. Let's go to Matthew 5. Since people wear this one out, let's wear this one out. Let's read the next verse here. We're going to read it all. Nobody ducking nothing. Matthew 5. Nobody lying. Nobody trying to lie to you. None of that. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. The Lord finally put on my heart to do it because it ain't up to me. Matthew 5. Matthew 5 and verse 17. 
Because folks say, oh, yeah, man, he was trying to use Matthew 7. Let's say what it say. He say, think that, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from the law till I'll be fulfilled. Where the law at? Where's the law at? Oh, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. It's, it, it ain't going to pass till I'll be fulfilled. There's not one law out that was taken out of the Bible. Not one law has been removed out of the Bible. If so, when, it, when we go back to the Old Testament and, and it says certain things, we can't even read that, that verse no more because it's done away with. But you talk about Sunday Christians who say the law done away with when you're doing away with the law. Like in Psalms 119, he said, they have made void my law. Who making void laws around here? Is it you? Somebody has to pay for that. Won't be me. Matthew 5, let's skip down. Being said that he ain't did away with no law, let's make sure. Let's skip down to Matthew 5 and verse 33. We're going to get to 32. Nobody running. Let's read 33 though. Again, ye have heard that it have been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by the head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. So you shouldn't be making vows then if this if he did away with laws, if he did away with laws and stuff. We, why are people making vows then? Why when you get married, you make vows? Why is that? Did he do away with it? No, let's see. 37, but let your communication be yeah, yeah, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these coming through evil. All he's telling you is you ain't even got to do all that making a vow and saying you ain't going to do this for a certain amount of years or whatever. You don't have to do that because if you mess up, that's more evil you brought upon yourself. Did he do away with anything? Are you sinning because you're vowing? No. Now let's go back to Leviticus 21. Leviticus 21. That's why he said to Jeremiah, man, I made you, your words like fire in the people would. Keep it up, man. Keep the plan around. You will get exposed. Leviticus 21 and 7. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto the God. So you can't marry a woman who was put away from her who? She got a husband still. Let's, let's read verse 14. Matter of fact, let's read 13. He said, and he shall take a wife in her virginity. So they couldn't marry nobody who slept with anybody before. Especially a woman who was put away from her who? Her husband. Who else they couldn't get? A widow. So you can't, want, have, you can't be with a woman who had a husband and he died. Or a divorced woman. Wait a minute. It don't say put away from her husband. It say a divorced woman. Man, we got a lot of things going on. You got a woman that was put away from her who? Husband, and then you got a divorced woman. Why don't say she was divorced from her? Why, why don't see that? Why just say divorced woman flat out? Because we know what that means. You don't have no husband. But could a priest marry her? No. But let's go into Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter. Matter of fact, let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter first. Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Exodus 12 chapter. Exodus 12, and let's read verse 15. Exodus 12 and verse 15. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Do that mean he divorced, divorced the leaven? Because it said put away in Leviticus 21. Put away from who? That means she was sent away from her husband. That don't mean she was divorced. Or this means, oh, divorce the bread. Divorce the bread. Because put away and divorce mean the same thing. Divorce the bread. No, let's read it. Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy 24. Like a brother, a prominent teacher in Israel texts me and said, yeah, man, it's all putting away. Divorce is for the wife. You're exactly right. What must you do? Deuteronomy 24. You can argue with the law if you want, but he said if you take one word out of this law, you're going to pay you're not very wise, are you? Deuteronomy 24 and 1. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass 
that she find no favor in his eyes because he had found some uncleanness in her? Then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in, in her hand and send her out of the house. You put away leaven out of your house when you were sending your wife or putting your wife away out of your house. What must you do? Write her a piece of paper to prove that she is free to go. That's how you divorce somebody. That's how you put a woman out of your house. Paperwork must be included or some form of record must be there. Or what are you going to cause her to commit? Adultery. If you send a woman out of your house, no record, no proof of you divorcing her. And if somebody lay with her, that's adultery because she's just simply put away or put out of the house. It's very simple. We ain't even made it out of the law yet like that. Mm, mm, mm. And brothers say, oh, man, see, what brothers was doing was they had fine uncleanness like if her feet stink. Really? You going to make light of this? It's saying Proverbs 14, a foolish woman plugging her house down. What about that? You got to deal with that? She plugging the house down. She plugging my house. Everything I do, she undo. If she get to stay, I'm stuck, huh? I'm stuck. Does that make sense? Just like a sister getting beat on and mistreated and all of that, she's stuck too, huh? Matter of fact, you married to a woman and you commit adultery with another man's wife, she's still stuck, huh? Huh? That's righteous? That's what the Lord was preaching? Come on, man. We smarter than that, ain't we? What did we say? The law for dummies? We, we, it's simple. It's simple and plain. And we ain't even did nothing yet. Verse 2. And when she has departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. What? This is done away with, huh? Jesus done away with the law, huh? Wow. Man, that's tough. But it say here, this is what the Lord discussed with God himself in the mount. He went up there 40 days and 40 nights, two times. This is an accident in here. We read this in Leviticus. About a woman who was put away from her, from her husband and a woman who was divorced from her husband. How did that get in the law like that? That's done away with. Man. Verse 3. And if, her, and if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Or if the latter husband died which took her to be his wife. Her former husband which have sent her away may not take her again to be his wife after she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. This is going to show you that women, men or women, because it take a man and a woman to sleep around, don't it? That goes to show you when it says she's defiled, that means she wasn't sleeping, they weren't sleeping around like this. She was defiled because she slept with another man. That made her defiled. She moved on and was married to another man. If she come back to you, she's defiled because she slept with another man. That's plain and simple. That, that, that ship is sailed. You can't go back. You must go forward. But we in 2021 where everybody done slept with somebody. But you telling me because that sister been married over there and that sister slept with 10 people. She ain't never been married. Oh, she's free to marry, but she up oh, can't touch her. She got to sit in bondage for the rest of her life and she didn't do nothing wrong. Don't worry about it. We're going to smash all of that. That's garbage. Garbage. Verse 5. Because I hear this scripture being used. When a man have taken a new wife. Wait a minute. How did he get a new wife? Oh, because the other one, he divorced the other one. He got to get a new one. I hear brothers say, oh, yeah, man, you cheer up your wife, man. Why are you using that scripture if it don't count no more? When a man have taken out a new wife. He shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he had taken. Whatever happened in your past marriage, you got to fix that. So make sure this don't happen again. You need to cheer her up. Is this new stuff? Do you think Paul don't know about this? If a man divorce and get another wife? Let's see. Let's go into 1 Corinthians 7 again. 7 again. 1 Corinthians 7. I'm sorry. Don't mind me. I'm just me. 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. And verse 32. 1 Corinthians 7 and 32. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried, care for the things that belong to the Lord and how he may please the Lord. Of course, when you don't have no wife, you can 
focus on God 100%. Because you do know when you are married, you have to consider the person you're in a marriage with. You didn't know that? Let's read it up, to, up top. Let's read it up top. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. That means you got to be nice to each other. That means you have to consider what your wife thinks. And your wife, you have to consider what your husband thinks. You have to be nice to each other. Folks say, yeah, this only means sex. No way. Go look up due benevolence. You have to be nice to one another. He has to tell you that because down here in verse 32, when you're not married, you don't have to care about that. But when you are, you do. Verse 33, but he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. But look at this. Verse 39, he say what? The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth, but and if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. This ain't even got nothing to do with divorce or nothing. As long as you are married to that man, and she, he, you are bound to him. But if he divorced you, how are you still bound to him? Somebody going to make you still bound to somebody that don't want you? That somebody divorced you? Are you kidding me? He divorced you 10 years ago, 7 years ago. Oh yeah, you stuck, sis. Yeah. Your husband in life, for, your, 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 your husband in prison for life. He ain't getting out. He dead. He, dead. he ain't getting out. Any messing with dudes in there. Oh yeah, you know, I ain't going to she stuck, man. Come on, man. Let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? All right, verse 27. Let's get to the point I was making. When you get a new wife and all that, let's see if it's sin. Verse 27. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Of course. You're supposed to stay together forever. That's the intention. He said, art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. Art thou loose from a wife? Wait a minute. How did you get loose from a wife? She had to die? Really? I don't see no law in there that says a man is bound to the law of his wife as long as he lives. I don't see that in the Bible. How did he get loose from her? She died? Really? Now we got couples. We got servants of God who are suffering in their marriages waiting for the other partner to die so they're not in sin if they divorce. That's wicked in and of itself. You wishing harm to your partner. It's saying Proverbs, he that is happy at calamities. You a fool, man. You wicked. You don't have to do that. If it ain't working out, it ain't working out. It, it is what it is. But don't be in it in sin. You got men you know, telling their wife every day, you ugly and fat. I hate you. I wish you never was born. All you think because you still with her, you're going to make it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You don't think it apply in your marriage. You think you, you getting points? Oh, yeah, but we stayed together. Yeah, he, he be tearing his wife up. He done killed her. Oh, man, at least she stayed. Man, she stayed. Yeah, but she dead. Oh, but she stayed. You better wake up, man. Verse 27, art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. So he said, man, just chill out and serve the Lord. Let's read the next verse, though. But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Wait a minute. If you don't have, if you lose from a wife and then you marry another one, you ain't sin. So we're going to deal with the whole Bible. We're not going to just pick apart. Because I know even divorce could be messed up if it's used incorrectly. Let's take a look. Let's go to Malachi. Let's see. I hope it's here. Malachi 2. Let's see. Might be Micah 2, actually. Micah 2. Let's try it there. Go to Micah 2. Micah 2. Let's go to Micah 2. Because you can use divorce incorrectly, just like you use that scripture. You shall, if you lay with a woman who's not betrothed. That's okay. But that's on you. You misuse it. I don't have to be your, I don't have to control you. I have to teach the Bible correctly. As the Lord has shown me, I have to teach it that way. You make the decision. I'm, I, you know, I could be protecting one and then destroy another. No, let's deal with the Bible. You make the decision. You know your situation better than me. But again, nobody's pr promoting any type of separation. No, we ain't promoting none of that. It's just in the Bible. You got people thinking they ain't seeing. People scared to come to class because they don't. Come on, man. Stop it. Cut it out. 
Micah, Micah, the second chapter, verse nine. Look at this. It said, the woman of my people, have you cast out from their pleasant houses, from their children? Have you taken away my glory forever? Because really, the kids don't go with the woman. I'm sorry to tell you, the kids don't go with the woman. They stay with the man. So even divorce could be messed up. You done pulled the woman away from her, her kids. That could be messed up. Or you could just be sending her out. Still messed up. So let's, we're not disregarding nothing. We're not disregarding no possibilities. But let's go to the, let's go back to, let's go to Ezra. Ezra the 10th chapter. Because we see in Deuteronomy 24, that's a law there. That you, if you, you know, if something ain't working out, you get divorced, you become another man's wife. That's it. Just move on. It just ain't all this coming back. Because we can read, if he try to come back, it's an abomination. Now you got folks who've been divorced and they say, oh man, you was divorced, but you wasn't in the truth then. The law don't change. If the law is what y'all say it is, it don't even matter that you wasn't in the truth. Once you find out, you don't do it, right? So if you got divorced outside of the truth, got in the truth, the law is still there if it say what y'all say it say. The law is still there. So she still can't get married even though, oh yeah, that was before the truth. No, the law is still there. It's going to be sin. Should you continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. So that don't work either. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, that was before. No, the law don't change if it say what you say. But we can teach it right. We don't have to say that. We're going to teach it right. I said Deuteronomy 24. Okay, let's go to Ezra 10. Ezra the 10th chapter, I believe. Ezra 10. Let's see. Ezra 10. Let's see. Ezra 10. Ezra 10 and 3. Ezra 10 and 3. Because we read when you put a woman out your house, when you put her away, she mostly get a bill of divorcement. You don't just put her out. You have to give her some type of record of, to show proof that she can get married again. If not, she's going to be in destitution because she can't get... She, she, uh, men, women back then were dependent on men. So... Ain't no man just going to take care of you for free. We see that today. That's why you got harlots walking around. And you got men of God sleeping with them. But that's another lesson. Uh, Ezra 10 and 3. They ain't men of God, though. They just say his name. Ezra 10 and 3. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives. Oh, oh that means the boys. Oh. Put away is what it means. You, you getting put out. So how is it done according to what God said? Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to what? According to the law. So if you're going to put your wife out, you got to give her some type of record that she is that you're done with her so she can move on and be married to somebody else. Because what's going to happen over time, somebody going to marry her and it's going to be adultery. And that's why the Lord of Malachi 2 said he hate putting away. You done set this sister up to be caught in adultery. Are you tripping? You lost your mind? What they be saying? Oh, you got to be smoking dope. Yeah, you, you got to be. Let's, let's see it, though. Let's go into uh, Hosea 4. Hosea the four. We ain't even. We barely touched the New Testament. Let's get out of the old first. Hosea four. Hosea the fourth chapter. Cause brothers is wicked, man. They sleeping around, doing all type of garbage, and they wives are suffering. They stuck. Well, let's see. The Lord is smarter than you. You didn't know that. You didn't know you're smarter than you, huh? Hosea four. And, third, and 12, no, no, no. Hosea 4 and 11, look what it say. <laughs> okay, I feel you. I see you. you said, what if we was together for 20 years and never let God legally made, how would he give him a divorce? Okay, okay. So let's deal with that. We're going to come right back. Go to Ezekiel, uh, the 16th chapter. Cause that's the old, that's how they get you. That's how they do. Oh, it didn't take you no paperwork to get in. So how come it don't, how need, nah, man, it ain't that simple. We all messed up. It was supposed to be some type of token to prove that y'all was together or married. 
Ezekiel 16 and 8. Ezekiel chapter 16 and 8. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. So I swear unto thee with my mouth and entered into a covenant with thee. Ain't that what you do when you stand in front of the, uh, the, 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 the person that's doing the marriage? You know, that's what you do. They don't necessarily give you, a, United States give you paperwork. So that make it, that don't make it any more binding than the word of your mouth. Let's see what God said though. He said, he said, yeah, I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou became his mind. That's how marriage is done. Confess. That's how a covenant is made. You make it with your mouth. And then the proof is on the table. When you come together, you're supposed to bleed. And that's your token or proof that y'all together and you was in fact a virgin. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, we so messed up. It ain't like that. So now the government, the United States got to get in our business. And they tell us if we married or not. If that's what you believe, that is fine. But I don't want you to think you in sin. But he say, you want to be done with it? He writes you a bill of divorce and you're free to go and be another man. But that's not what we're trying to do, though. You want to stay together forever. That's the intention. But if a man going to beat his wife and mistreat her, he needs to let her go. Because you're not getting no points. You're not getting no points. Just like a sister plucking her house down. You set your husband up to be killed or something. He need to, he stuck with you? You kidding me? Got to go. Oh, yeah, stay, brother, and get killed. That sounds overrides to me. The people telling you that would never go for that. Let's go back to Hosea 4. So let's see how the Lord already ahead of these brothers doing that, sleeping with women left and right, doing all type of stuff to their wives. And they're going to send them out and, and say, oh, man, she committed adultery. But you kicked her out. Matter of fact, you told you be some of y'all just say, get out. I'm done with you. Get out. Some of you formally do it. But then when they, when they out of the house, you try to say, oh, yeah, they're committing adultery over there. They're sinning. Let's see if you're smarter than God. Hosea 4 and 11, hoard them and wine and new wine. Take away the heart. So that wine could be looked at as doctrine. You find something, you go with it. But we know, folks, folks when you're drinking, you get tipsy, you get a little froggy. We know that. But he said, hoard them and wine and new wine. Take away the heart. Verse 12, my people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declare unto them for the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err and they have gone a horn from under their God. Same way, same spirit that caused you to sleep with all these women. Same spirit that caused you to deal with all these false gods or these other gods. Verse 13, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and ales because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. Since you want to transgress against me, young man or elder man, you want to deal with all these other guys You want to sleep around with people all the time. I'm not even going to judge your daughters or your wives when either one they commit whoredom because it take a man to do that or when they commit adultery. And it ain't like they're going around sleeping with men knowing they married. No, you put them out the house and eventually they got married to somebody else. That's why he said don't take no widow into the congregation. Unless she's 60 years old. Because the younger woman, they're going to want to marry. But you tell the sister she on ice for the rest of her life. Because somebody divorced her. you got to be kidding me. But the sister that was cheating on her husband and fornicating all around, married to her husband. She, her husband can let her go and she marry another person and it's not adultery. That's what you call your conscience being seared with a hot iron. You can't even reason. That don't even make no sense. Verse 14. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. Oh, you trying to get a you try to get a uh, cut cut off, huh? You try to get her killed or something, huh? You try to send her out the house, and when somebody marry her, oh, see she committed adultery. Who who caused that to happen? Who sent her out on her way? Who forgot they had a wife at home? Who was sleeping around with all these women? Forgot they had a wife back in the, a wife of the youth. He called it back in the past. You forgot. You forgot you thought the Lord didn't see that? Yeah, man, she committed adultery over there. Come on, bro. The Lord's smarter than you. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. Why not? For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. 
Therefore, the people that do not understand shall fall. These people that are doing that, they're going to fall. Get away from them. They will be destroyed. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. They will be destroyed. And if you're around people like that, you better go somewhere else. You over here sleeping with women left and right, committing whoredoms. You separated with harlots. You got a wife over there you done sent away. And you want the Lord to kill her, but not you. Let's go some more. Let's read some more. We ain't even get to the new yet. But it should line up with what we've been reading out of the old already, huh? Let's go to Malachi. Or is it Malachi? Is it Mal is, I think it's Malachi. Yeah, Malachi, I believe. Malachi 2. Cut that unrighteous stuff out. That's why I did a lesson. The Lord put on my heart in Washington and D.C., my last lesson at Israel Church of Jesus, my last ever lesson, righteous judgment, which exposed all this unrighteousness going on. But somebody wasn't listening because you did. You went against everything that was taught in that lesson. And you know who got to pay for that? You got to pay for that. Malachi 2, verse 13. Malachi 2 and 13. And this have you done again. Covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that he regarded not the offering anymore, or receive it with good will at your hand. The Lord, you, the Lord ain't hearing you. You tripping. The Lord ain't hearing you. Let's see what he was doing. Verse 14. Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. How did you deal treacherously against the wife of thy youth? Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. This is still his wife we're dealing with. How'd you deal treacherous with her? He said, verse 15, and did not he make one, yet he had the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. That's your, that's your first wife. Your wife of the first. What happened? What happened to that one over there? How did you deal treacherously against her? Let's see. For the Lord, for the Lord, the God of Israel, said that He hate putting away. You just threw her out. Now she, you deal treacherous with her. You know how you did it? Because she ain't got nobody to depend on. And if she do find somebody to depend on her and to marry her, it's adultery. Who caused that? You did it. You gonna think you coming to the Lord, crying to the Lord? You just dealt treacherously with this woman. You sent her out. No way to get remarried. No way. You didn't give her no divorce, no record or nothing. You just threw her out. Get out of here. Boom. Kicked her out. Put her out of the house. No way for her to get remarried at all. You dealt trustly with that woman. Who got to pay for that? You got to pay. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. Let's see an example. Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter. And then by the time we get to the New Testament, this should be no question. Matter of fact, we could just go to the New Testament after this script. I didn't even mean to go this long. Deuteronomy 22, but it ain't up to me, right? Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22, this is what these men were trying to do. So Moses like, man, if y'all going to do this, bro, just, just write a bill of divorce and let her go, man. But no, you if she couldn't be with you, she couldn't be with nobody else. So what you got to do? You just got to kick her out so nobody can be with her. Watch. That's what you call putting away. You just put her out of your house. It said put away 11 out of your house. You try to just throw your wife out or put your wife out the house. No type of nothing. But let's see. Deuteronomy 22, let's see an example of what was going on. This is before Deuteronomy 24, where you said write a bill of divorcement. But it was in, we already read divorcement in, in the law, in Leviticus. You could have read in the next chapter if the priest had a daughter and she was divorced. She could come back home. Deuteronomy 22 and 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her, and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Because when you married a woman, she was supposed to be a virgin. She was supposed to be untouched. That's what with any man. It wasn't necessarily just with the priest. It was just if under no circumstance could a priest marry any woman who was not a virgin. But a common man could. But this is ideal for a man to have a woman who has never been touched. But you, you brought up a case and said, you married this woman, and when you went into her, she didn't bleed or nothing, you realized this wasn't no virgin. 
I wonder if she was allowed to get a bill of divorcement and go marry somebody else, or was that off the table for her? And we'll understand that when we finish this chapter. This, this, this little, these little scripts, we'll understand that. What he was trying to do. So he said, you gave a, 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 a cage of speech against her, made an evil name and said, this wasn't no virgin. Because he told you in Deuteronomy 23 that the Lord didn't want no whore or no sodomite in Israel. Verse 15, it said, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city and the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hate her. That's the problem. You didn't want her no more. You went into it just like Amnon and Tamar. You went into the you went into Tamar. Your, your hatred for her was more than the love you have once you once had for her. That's how it be. You would go into a woman and hate her. That's how men be. But the men, everybody knew that marriage was forever. So he was trying to pull a fast one. Verse 16 again, he said, And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. And lo, he hath given a speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of the city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a what? A virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. You can't send her away. What you was trying to do was send her away, wasn't she? Sorry, you stuck. She stuck with you. You can't send her away. But we read in Deuteronomy 24 that you could write a bill of divorcement and then put her out. He wasn't trying to do that. Let's see what he was trying to do. Because what would have happened if it was true? Let's see. Verse 20. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel. What did she do? Did she commit adultery? Did she fornicate on this man? What did she do? Let's see. He said, Then shall they bring out in 21 the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she have wrought folly in Israel to play the whore where at? In her father's house. She didn't commit adultery. She didn't fornicate on this man. She did that in her father's house. And if she had did that in her father's house, that means he could have put her away because what she do in her father's house? She committed fornication. You don't get no bill of divorce for that. You were being deceitful. You have a seat or you die, either one. But there ain't no bill of divorce for you to go marry another man after you done did that. You get put away. You're in timeout. David, when his wife slept with, slept with Absalom on the roof, they didn't get no bill of divorcement to go marry somebody else. They were put in widowhood. You're done. Shut up. You're done. Have a seat. Over with. You committing adultery or fornicating against your husband wasn't a license for him to say, oh, yeah, you know what? You can marry another man. And it's not a no, that's no, that's not what we're dealing with. But you know when that works, that works for a brother who's sleeping around saying, oh, man, I tried to make her my wife, man. I slept with her, tried to make her my wife, but she slept with another dude. But you knew she was already. Oh, see, I'm free from that. See, I'm free. Ooh, she slept with somebody else. Man, I'm free. Ooh, on to the next one. That worked for you. If that doctrine you say is true. Matter of fact, let's stop talking about it. Let's just go to it. Let's go to Matthew 19 first. Matthew 19. See, the Bible real simple when nobody trying to lie to you. Matthew 19, nobody sinning, nobody deception, dealing with deception or trying to lead captive silly women and sleep with women. and all. That's what folks is doing, and they will be destroyed. Just sit back and watch. Matthew 19, verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. Oh, so they're trying to make him say something against what we already read in the law. Wow. I wonder what Jesus go against the law that he gave to Moses. Man, let's see. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any reason? They say, man, can we just throw her out for any reason? Can we just send her away for any reason? That's what we read. They say put away. They can simply say divorce if it was talked about divorce. He said send her away. But you don't want to be getting divorced either. We know that. But things happen. That's obvious. That's why it's in there. 
Because it was really for wicked men whose heart was hardened against their wives. You see what the brother tried to do? He tried to get his wife killed because he didn't want her. But the mother was like, nah, man, you don't have to do that. Just write a bill of divorce so she could be married to somebody else. But you don't want her to be married to nobody else. You wanted to suffer over there. No, no, it's okay. You don't have to wait for your spouse to die so you can marry somebody else. That is wicked. You don't have to do that. He said, can we put away for any reason? Now, we already read the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. But he's talking about just sending her out the house. Let's make sure, because it said that we're tempting him. Let's see. And he answered and said unto him, unto them, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife? Excuse me. And they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. But therefore, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Let no man split up. You're supposed to be one flesh anyway. How can you split your body in half if you're one flesh? That means you're supposed to stay together forever. You think these brothers didn't know that? Everybody knows that. But they tried to trip him up by asking it slick. They said, can we just put her out for any reason? Can we just throw her out the house for any reason? Because we already seen a brother that tried to do that. Let's keep reading. Verse 7. This is where the temptation, this is where the tripping up comes in. This is another question. Look at this. Then say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put away? Why didn't they just ask that at the, at the rip? Because they were trying to trip him up. That ain't what they asked at first. They said, can we just put her away? Can we just put her out? Then he said, nobody should be splitting up, period. No body should be separated. Then they said, oh, well, then why did Moses command to write a bill of divorcement and then to put her away? Because that's what it takes. Verse 8, here we go. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. Uh oh, it only said putting away. But look what it said. It said, Moses said, he, he suffered you to put away. Right, right, right. It wasn't for us to sin in the beginning either. Oh, well. But we sinned, right? It was not meant for us to die, but we still dying, right? But he said, he said, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. We could go to Deuteronomy 24 and see when you put, out, put your wife away, what you must do. Give her a piece of paperwork. But verse 9, now he's going to get to the original question in verse 3. Verse 9 says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. I asked the brother, What does fornication mean here? What was the brother in Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, when he was trying to put away his wife? He was just trying to send her wife out. What did he accuse her of? Fornicating. Did, he, did she commit adultery? Where did she fornicate at? It say in her father's house. Now, I wonder it don't say adultery right here. You cannot put your wife away or send her out except it be for fornication. A woman was supposed to go into her marriage untouched. So if a brother got married to a woman and realized she had fornicated with somebody, the deal's off. I don't, you don't, I don't have to write you no bill of divorce so you can be another man. You done. Stick a fork in you. You done. That's when you need to go sit down. Not if you didn't do nothing wrong in your relationship and your husband just one day said, you know what? I'm done with you. I don't want you no more. You done. You're divorced. Bye. You say, oh, no, nah, man, she's stuck forever. No, sir. Let's make sure, though. He said, I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except to be for fornication and, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Then we read in Leviticus 21 that a woman was put away from her who? Her husband. That means she still got one. A divorced woman, she don't have no husband. So if I sleep with a woman, or if I, I ain't sleep with no woman, if I marry a woman who is divorced, that means she don't have no husband. How could that be adultery? Based off of the law. That's what we're going off of. We're no New Testament here. It's our law back here. No New Testament here. Did Christ make up some new stuff? No. What's that mean with Bugs Bunny? No. Verse, he say, and whoso marrieth her which is put away does commit adultery. So the brother that just sent her out, trying to set her up, you commit adultery against her. And if somebody married her that is put away, because she's still married to you, 
That's adultery. But a divorced woman cannot be in adultery. She don't have no husband. How you think the woman at the well in John chapter 4 have five husbands? And the one you with ain't your husband. Because you're still married to that other one. If you are divorced from that one, that ain't your husband. Nobody going to make that your husband. Still, After he said, you are not my wife no more. You done. We done. You're free to go. How's somebody going to come and tell you you still married to them? Who are you? What are you, what are you doing? So he said, so verse, look at verse 10. This will tell you. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is good not to marry. If you're going to set this woman up for adultery, bro, you might as well not get married, bro. That's bad business. Let's read it again. Let's go to Luke 16. Because because what, what, what's being taught is uh, a woman can only get a divorce. A, a, a husband can only divorce his wife if she cheat on him. And then when she married another man, it is not adultery because she cheated to get out of that relationship. Do that make sense? I got to cheat on my husband to be married to another man that's treating me better, that will potentially treat me better. In order to get with that or experience that, I have to go against God and commit fornication so he can be free of me. You know what that fit into? Some stuff you're doing behind the scenes that's wicked. Sleeping with women left and right. Oh, yeah. When she sleep with another one, I'm free. Yeah. Yeah. That fit with what you're doing. But it don't fit with God. You know who's going who gonna to destroy that God will? And it don't take his return for him to destroy any one of you. But I don't hear nobody laughing. Man, when they was laughing and joking. Yeah, somebody needs to repent. Right? Since they're saying people need to repent. I think you need to repent. Uh, Luke 16. Luke 16 and 17. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Let's read the next verse. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband. Put away from her who? Husband. She still got a husband, man. So if you marry her, it's adultery. Ain't that simple? It is simple. You know why? Because nobody's trying to lie to you. Man, this is too easy. Now, we go to Matthew 5, I guess, you know, this is the, this one everybody's stuck on, one verse. When do we ever just go out one verse? And if it contradicts the law of God, then we got to throw the Bible away then. Because it got, it got controversy, it got, it's hypocrisy in here, it's whatever they say. The Bible been tampered with, all of that. But I'm going to show you something. Sometimes you do got to go to the Greek, bro. Sometimes you do got to go to the Greek. And I know people be like, man, you know, you're using them other books. You're going to the Greek, man. Who told you that was off limits? When the Lord said in, Matthew, in Isaiah 28 and 11, with stammering lips in another tongue, will he speak to this people? You know what stammering mean? That means you, it ain't clear all the way. And it's being translated into other languages. You think something not going to get, you think it ain't going to be no issue? I could go to Revelation 21 where an angel's talking. But it's in red. And then I can turn around with an angel still talking and it's in regular print. That means that the person who translated the book, they got confused. Sometimes you do have to go to the Greek, like in Acts chapter 12 and say, Herod intended to keep them in until Easter. You go into the Greek and say something about Pascal. It means Passover. So if we read, let's read Matthew 5 and 32. Matter of fact, Matthew 5, what's up? Matthew 5 and 31. This is my last one. We're going to get up out of here because, you know, the new moon is, 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 is in, in full effect. Matthew 5 and 31. And that being said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. If you're going to send her out, give her a bill of divorcement. Uh-oh. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. How can you call somebody who you're not married to to commit adultery? If you divorce somebody, they're not married to you no more. Nobody can make you still married to them. That's not what Jesus was saying. If she would just simply just put out, she still has a husband. Leave her alone. But if he gave her a record or a writing or some sort of proof, then you're good to go. But look, this is where we get tripped up. He said... 
And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. How can you marry somebody who's divorced and it be adultery if she don't have no husband? So if you go to the Greek, you'll realize that this saying that is showing you that this woman who you commit adultery with, she ain't divorced. She just put away. She still has a husband. You go to the Greek on your own. You don't have to. That's only one verse they got. You only got one verse now. But let's make sure. Let's put the nail in the coffin that putting away and divorce are two different things because that's the title of the lesson. Let's go to Mark chapter 10 real quick. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 and verse 2. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. He, gonna, he, he already told you when it's lawful. If, she, if you find out she wasn't no virgin, based on the scripture, if you was promised a maid or a virgin and she wasn't one, you, she, you free to, she got to go. You don't get to marry nobody. You just operate in deceit. You know what? You didn't need a bill of divorcement to go die because that's what it would, would have happened. If you committed adultery, you would be killed. There's no reason for you to need a bill of divorcement to go marry another man if, he gonna, if, the, if you already supposed to die. You read John 8, they already knew what, if you read John 8, they already knew what to do with a woman who was caught in adultery. She's supposed to die. But y'all, we so twisted. I ain't, no, we, I ain't accepting that. Brothers are so twisted that they done changed the scriptures, saying the Pharisees, who are experts in the law, and Jesus, the holiest of holies, was discussing whether or not an adulterous woman could get remarried and it not be considered adultery, while the sister that did no wrongdoing in her marriage didn't do nothing wrong. Her husband decided he don't want her no more. If she get married again, she committed adultery. That is unrighteousness. That is hypocrisy. That is the epitome of it. Verse 3 again. He said they tempted him, right? Verse 3. And he answered and said unto him, what did Moses command you? How that supposed to work? And they said Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. That's, so they knew what to do. And Jesus answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they, shall, they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. What, to, what therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. So you still ain't supposed to be getting divorced, but it, things happen. But I know one thing, you ain't supposed to just be sending your wife up out of here and then she done, she just out here knowing she's going to marry somebody else. You know that scratch gonna need, that itch going to need to be scratched. But she's still married to you and if she messes with somebody else, that's adultery because she's still married to you. Therefore, she just simply put out. Verse 10, and in the house, his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he said unto them, whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. How can you, by simply divorcing your wife and giving her a bill of divorcement to marry somebody else, how are you committing adultery against her? That is impossible. The only way you could be committing adultery against her if you were doing the same thing they was doing in Hosea chapter 4 and Micah the second chapter, you just simply threw your wife out setting her up to commit adultery because she's still married to you. That's the only way it could happen. But if she has a bill of divorcement, that means she is free to marry another man. That means she is not married to you and free to marry another man. This is plain and simple. Verse 12, and if a woman shall put away her husband, wait a minute, a woman can get a divorce? What law is that? There's no law in there, so this putting away cannot refer to divorce. That means she just sent the brother out of the house. That could happen because the law of Moses say, a man can divorce a woman. It don't say nothing about a woman divorcing her husband. It say put away. If a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she, com she commit adultery. Because you know she's still married to that man. She can't divorce him. That ain't in the Bible. But it say if a woman put away her husband, that means she can divorce him? No, that means she sent him out. That's how you know putting away and divorce ain't the same thing. So if you are free, if you've been freed up from your past relationship, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't your problem. If you are divorced, if you are not married, you are free to marry again. Don't let nobody try to make you still married to somebody. That is ridiculous. That was Mark chapter 10. Peace.